welcome back. Vanessa is 19 years old, living and working in New York City, but Vanessa was also born as a boy. At first, her immigrant family had a difficult time accepting their son as their daughter, but now that she's decided on surgery, they've come to support her. But neither the family nor Vanessa can afford her transition, so she's turned to prostitution to pay for the body she feels she should have been born with. 2020 goes along with her to Guadalajara, Mexico, where six and a half grand will buy her six surgeries in two hours as she struggles to become the woman she's always wanted to be. Vanessa Rodriguez is desperate. Today, she's making a journey that is both risky and controversial, but it is a journey, she says, no one can stop her from making. I guess I won't believe it until I'm there. She is headed to LaGuardia Airport in New York for a flight across the border to Mexico for the surgery that will help her turn her male body into a female one. Because beneath the makeup, Vanessa is biologically a 19-year-old boy. I don't want to go back to that awkward little boy that was shy and hid away from everybody. Her father, Carlos, is dropping her off at the airport. He's praying she will not go through with this. But that does not stop her either. Okay, baby. I'm ready. Baby, good. Call me. All right? Call me. Vanessa's sister, Annie, says her little brother, Perry, started to change in high school. People in his school made fun of him. They threw textbooks at him, and he had a rough time. Life at home was tough, too. I felt kind of bad for my parents, but, you know, it was hard for them to accept my son wants to be a girl. Hardest for their mother. I feel that I, that I lose my son. I get out of my bed and cry. I miss my son. I don't know where he is. Her son spent his teenage years as Vanessa, moving through a dark and sometimes dangerous world in which transgender teens sell their bodies. It funded her drug of choice, black market hormone injections to feminize her. My time, it's 200 for the hour and 150 for the half. Is that okay with you? Now she saves up for her new body by selling her old one in cheap hotel rooms. All right, that's fine. Give me a call when you're like 20 minutes away. It's not a fresh enough for you. She calls herself an escort. What really gets her attention is the pictures. She says her clients are straight men who know she has a penis. It was heartbreaking for me to find that out, you know, that she was doing that. I. I remember telling her, like, there's other ways, but she would say, she would ask me, what way? You tell me and I would do it. I had no answer for her. I see it as a big sacrifice I have to make, but it's worth it now, because I'm getting my surgery. And so finally, it's time. Vanessa has landed in Guadalajara, Mexico's second largest city and a rising hotspot for medical tourists. Vanessa is taken straight to the hospital. As she checks in, her doctor appears, Dr. Sonny. A couple of her transgender girlfriends who know all about transitioning on a budget recommended him. His preoperative consultation is brief. Let's take a shower in there. I have good time, baby, because my, my team is in ready for you. The doctor is all business. There is no preoperative workup, no blood tests, no EKG. It's okay, pay me, pay me now. Yeah, um, the In the States, this surgery could cost upwards of $30,000. Here, it's $6,500 cash. She tells us she's not yet ready for so-called bottom surgery to remove the penis she was born with and create a vagina. But a more feminine face and a shapely body she craves. We should warn you, Vanessa's surgery is graphic. First, her breasts. Dr. Sunny puts in 700 cc's of silicone, which Vanessa hopes will take her to around a D cup. This is my passion try today. And this day, we have four surgeries more. Five more procedures to go. He removes her Adam's apple, breaks and rebuilds her nose, and shaves down her jawline, all in just a couple of hours. Six surgeries in one time is no problem. Yeah, because I work very, very fast. Doctors we spoke to here in the state said procedures like this would take more than twice as much time in the U.S. 
but for Vanessa, it's worth the risk. Heavily sedated, she calls home. I finally did it. I'm happy that I did it. Ten days later, her father and sister are on their way to the airport to pick up the new Vanessa. Can't wait. And I'm pretty sure she got herself all dolled up. And there she is. <laughs> oh, that's my daughter. Oh, my God, I miss you. Oh, I'm sorry. Me too, I will. I think on the car ride home, Vanessa explains she's getting used to her new body. This jiggling, I've never felt that before. <laughs> she got big boobs now. <laughs> you know, now she can wear her clothes and not have to wear like, you know, before she would like <laughs> wear like two bras so you can look. <laughs> she may not look so very different on the outside, but the surgery seems to have given her a new confidence. Her mother has been waiting in the house she raised her little boy. Today, she's decided she will do all she can to make her new daughter feel welcome. Welcome home, Vanessa. Welcome home. No matter what, I love her. This Yay. Because that's what she needs right now, love. But Vanessa won't be staying home for long. She now wants a few more procedures, including brow bone surgery and lipo. That means more money. And so she has decided more sex work. One more year. One more year. Maybe even, yeah. I can hear people at home screaming, stop now while you can get out. I'm doing what I have to do to survive or to be what I want to be. And you could get a job at McDonald's tomorrow. <sighs> I guess. But for now, it's back to the cheap hotel rooms, back to the dream that more surgery will make her whole. On a much lighter note, just before we go, here's one from our Court on Camera Vault. You've heard of a cat burglar. Well, here's a story about an actual cat who burgles. Only on 2020. All this, the loot of perhaps the most prolific cat burglar ever. Meet Dusty. The klepto kitty who has become something of a national celebrity. Hi there, Dusty. Do you remember the first item? A little latex glove. I thought Jim left it on the bed. Right. And you two can work that out. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't want the cat to hear any of this. After the glove, Jean Chu and her husband Jim noticed other items showing up around their Northern California home, and neighbors noticed stuff missing. Amazing stuff, taken from backyards, open garages, and front stoops. And from the beginning, there was only one suspect. You didn't train Dusty to do this. No, uh, Dusty doesn't get trained. <laughs> Gene began cataloging the enormous take from Dusty's escapades, more than 600 items. Everyone knew he was doing it, but no one had caught him in the act until Anna the Planet right came here. and set up a nighttime surveillance Dusty. camera. The video went viral with almost two million hits. Dusty was popular around the country with grand marshal duties at a pet parade. He's all soft and cuddly. He doesn't feel like a thief. He doesn't feel like a villain. No, he isn't. <laughs> so far, the only thing that has stopped Dusty in his tracks? Check out this video of Dusty caught red-handed, or odd, when suddenly a girl cat named Chloe. He didn't want to look bad for the ladies. But otherwise, Dusty doesn't seem to care about his image. He is still on the prowl almost every night. A klepto kitty that might just end up a jailbird. What do you think, buddy? You comfortable in there? Get used to it. That's awesome. Uh, you can check out any of tonight's stories again by going to our website, tvnz.co.nz slash 20-20. You can also email us at 20-20 at tvnz.co.nz or go to our Facebook page and let us know your thoughts on tonight's show. Thanks for all your feedback over the past week. We're interested in your stories, so keep those ideas coming in. That's our show for tonight. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.